Today on the Locked On Red Wings, the Detroit Red Wings signed a Finnish goaltender after the World Championships. And then also, what would it take to land Alex DeBrinkett of the Chicago Blackhawks? Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. Scotty is a host over at Lockdown Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. Myself, well, I'm a producer over at 97 on the ticket. And Scotty, uh, what? <laughs> I thought that was like a weird myself. Well, I didn't, well, I didn't, I didn't put myself first there, so I was like, I got, I got to wrap this. Yeah, in usually there. you do. Usually I'm second fiddle, <clears throat> but today I got. Oh, oh wow. Okay. At least everyone knows now the reality of the situation. Correct. Uh, what are you wearing? What What is that? This is way. a Vladimir Guerrero Senior Montreal Expos jersey. That's sick. That is sick. Yeah, it's super cool. Dig that. Uh, thanks for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every single day. We are free and available on all platforms. Um, I We're going to talk today about the Finnish goaltender that Detroit Red Wings signed. Uh, UC, and I'm going to try my best, UC Okinora. Okinora. Oki yeah, Nuora. There we go. That's what I'm going to say. Oki Nuora. <laughs> it's it's a tough, another tough one. Uh, you see Oki Nuora, and um, he was just named MVP of World Championships. He led Finland to gold. He played fantastic in those World Championships. He had a 948 save, per, save percentage and a 1.11 goals against average. And I do want to talk about that because it makes the goaltending situation in Detroit pretty interesting. But first, I'm going to blindside you with this, Scotty. But uh, Tortorella is close to a deal in Philadelphia. Really? And this is more important for the fact that Philadelphia's vacancy is filled than it is that Tortorella is going there. I mean, I, I have I have thoughts on Philly and going after Tortorella. I think it's very on brand for Philadelphia Correct. to go for a guy like Tortorella. But it just takes another competitor out of the market for head coaching. And I'm trying to think off the top of my head now. It's Detroit and Winnipeg, I believe, that has a head coaching vacancy. Uh, Florida is kind of maybe looking at a new head coach, but they might just stick with their interim. So it, it seems like the Barry Trotz sweepstakes might be just down to Detroit and Winnipeg. And if not that, I mean, I'm still, like I said, we talked about with Barry or Barry with Max Boltman last night. I'd be okay with Derek Lalonde if they didn't get Barry Trotz. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely, uh, I mean, honestly, the, the, best part for me out of it was just like all the memes that came out of, 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 yeah. the, of, of him going to Philly. <laughs> There's a Definitely lot of really, look. really good content on Twitter. Uh, after, uh, after Torts announced that or whatever, that like they're close to a deal or he's basically there or whatever. Um, a lot of really, really funny, like Tortorella and, uh, gritty, like memes together, <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of really funny stuff. I highly recommend you go, uh, just search his name on Twitter, but um, yeah, no, it's it, it's. Oh wait, but the Bruins are also in the market for a head coach. We can't forget that because well, yeah, he did let sure. go of uh, Cassidy, obviously. For and Dallas, sure. is, there's is more. Dallas is Dallas, Dallas. Dallas has been linked with Pete DeBoer, but that's not official yet. That's like it's not even right. in the finalization process. But I've been hearing that Dallas is going to go after Pete DeBoer, who was the Vegas head coach before he got fired. So it's Boston, Detroit. And Winnipeg, and I'm probably forgetting another one that I'm really concerned about as the three that are in that Barry Trot sweepstake. I got I got a I got a gut feeling he's probably gonna go to Winnipeg because it's his hometown, but man, if Detroit could land a Barry Trotz, man. Cool. Yeah, no, that'd be super cool. And like, you know, the 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 the, the remaining teams you we that we even mentioned are all very desirable places. So just that just because we're uh we're we're kind of narrowing the market here doesn't mean that it's like any more of a slam dunk now than it was, but does, it is nice to, you know, eliminate some competition, I guess. Yeah. And then in Red Wings news, Scotty, the Red Wings, like I said, after winning the world championship gold, they signed UC. Ulki Nuora. You nailed it, man. That was, I took it slow that time. UC Ulki Nuora. <laughs> As the Tigers go down 11 to nothing through a push notification. Um, yeah. he is 31 years old. He's never been play played an NHL game. He's had time in the AHL and the ECHL. 
He played for the University of Denver for two years, I believe. Yep, two seasons in 2011 through 2013. He was good at that level, at the at the NCAA level, but never really saw any success at the AHL level and saw some uh, moderate success at the ECHL level, personal success, I should say. Uh, but has been pretty solid in his time over the KHL. He's It's very much because uh, he's a KHL goalie who just played for Team Finland. He's from Finland. Uh, but it's another KHL goaltender signing that Steve Eisenman just did with Magnus Helberg. And it's mostly interesting because it's a two-way contract that's going to pay him a $750,000, which is the league minimum. But I've got a feeling... I, see, I don't know how to how to take this. It's an NHL contract, just like Magnus Helberg was over uh, under, which is now expired. Does this signal the end to, of Magnus Helberg's potential of being the backup goaltender? Do we even think that you'll see Ulki Niwara could even be the backup goaltender in Detroit? So, so here's the thing. I I, I think after the last two years, where we have had just there have been stretches over the last two years where we've had a, such bad goalie injury situations where, like, we haven't known what the heck we were going to do, right? Yeah. Like like Calvin coming back up, you know. It, and um, I think that they will still be big players in the backup goalie market, and I don't think that this these kind of signings change that. I don't think they're like, oh, well, you know, we, we, got, we got this dude in Halbert, so, like, we're – you know what I mean? Like we're 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 good with backup goalies. Like I I think they're going to continue to to push and and kick the tires on that market. And I think that these signings are really just uh, backups so that a if they miss out on everybody they want in in free agency or in the off season or whatever, that they have at least someone to be back there. And b if they even you know if they do make another signing. They have some actual goalie depth, and and they give themselves some options as opposed to just being pigeonholed when when a, a single goalie goes down, like they have been the last two, three years, even. Well, like I, I understand the wanting just the depth because having it's never a bad thing to have too much goaltending. It's just weird to go on the international scale for that, mm-hmm. even if they miss out on Multiple a times, options too. A, options B, and options C in the free agent market. There's still option D, who would you would argue would be like, it, worst case scenario, you get like a Martin Jones, who's just not very good, fringe backup at that, or hell, even another Calvin Picard. Calvin Picard is a fringe backup in the NHL level. Sure. You're saying that those options are, not you, but like, it's implied that those options are worse than a Magnus Helberg or UC Ulki Niwara, who have been playing in the KHL. I've seen decent success on the personal level in the KHL, but it's a different... It's a lower tier of hockey, let's be honest. So it's just really interesting to me that they're sending these players not to like AHL contracts, but to NHL contracts. And it is two way, but that doesn't mean he can't, he still has to go through waivers if he gets sent down. It means that he just gets paid a different salary at the AHL level. So it's just really interesting to see these players, Magnus Halberg and UC Ulki Niora. And I can understand that Ulki Niora, um, trying really hard to uh, signing to a degree because he just came off a fantastic. Um, world championship with team Finland gold MVP. I get it. You're taking a flyer on a guy who, you know, might have a little bit of a resurgence. Uh, you did the same thing with Pontus Pont- Andreasen. He just ended up having a, a rookie of the year caliber season, uh, rookie of the year finalist caliber season over the SHL. So you're taking a flyer on a guy who, you know, maybe he's been overlooked or just as needing a uh, needing of an opportunity, but like to go after multiple guys, on the international market, when there's mar- guys available in the NHL market who I would argue are the same, I and without reasoning, like we haven't really been giving reasonings on this besides just depth pieces. But this is a guy on the NHL roster, so you have to think, okay, Magnus Helberg probably gone. We already kind of assumed Thomas Grice was gone, but this is the best option available. Like, do even if even if he was just a backup plan, if they don't if they miss out on A's, B's, and B's and C's options, you can still just you would assume that. D is still available. I, I just, I, I, I'm having trouble rationalizing. Not that I'm hating on this signing at all, but I'm trying to understand where Eiserman's head is at when making signings like this. And I, I'm not, I'm sounding really critical. I'm fine with the signing. It's seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. I don't really care. But I'm just, I'm trying to understand his mindset as to like what the purpose is of having this guy in an NHL contract. You know? Yeah, I'll, I, I, I don't. I'm not sure it's that deep. If you if you want to go to the ad first, that that's we I can I can say after, but I'm not sure I'm not sure it's that deep. 
Um, okay, yeah, let's let's go to talk about Built Bar, which, by the way, Scotty, so. Dude, did you get them? Yeah, oh, I did get them. I was about to ask you. They're so By good. far my I favorite flavor. I just got mine flavor. yesterday. I already finished both. So I, they sent one puff. It's the Mud Pie guys. We're talking about the Mud Pie Built Bar again. They sent one puff, and they sent one regular Built Bar, both in the Mud Pie flavor. I don't really know which one I liked better. So, like, the marshmallow of the puff is just like, it's a marshmallow. It tastes really good. But the regular built bar one almost tasted like a brownie to me and like a legitimate brownie. So yeah, I was like, the puff is more like, like gelatiny, right? It's like, yeah. it is, it's like, it's a marshmallow. It's a puff. Yeah. Like that's what it is. So, but the flavor um, was legit. Like I was so surprised, but both of them were, I literally sc- in, inhaled both of them like yeah. right away. They're so it's, good. It's almost as if, so when you get protein bars, a lot of times it'll be like a flavor and it'll have like, it's like when you drink sparkling water, like LaCroix, LaCroix, you get strawberry LaCroix. LaCroix. It's like you get the hint of a hint of a strawberry. And that's right. what it is like with most protein bars. But with Built Bars, it's not. And with Mud Pie Built Bars, it really wasn't. Like it, it felt legitimately unfair that it tastes that good for how healthy it is and how yeah. low calorie it is, how high protein it is. And I mean, I, I got the old stats for you guys right here. It's 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 got 16 grams of protein with only 150 calories and 8 grams of sugar. For something that tastes that good, it's a, it's a cheat code. It's not even fair. So... Above all, the birthday cake ones were great, but I think the built bar, the mud pie ones, might even be a tier above that. I know my roommate Troy; he he said he still liked the birthday cake ones better, but mud pie, yeah, um, you served um, that for me. I, I was having that debate with myself last night after I ate them. I was like, I don't know, man. That's a that's a tight race. I'm gonna have it's to a, get back to you. It's quite the problem to have to have two good tasting protein bars right, to decide yeah. between which one's better. Um, so guys, that's your ad read. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. This is a limited time flavor, so make sure you get it before it's gone. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Uh, we're talking very briefly. We'll finish it up here because I'm sure people want us to talk about the Alex Debrinkit news. Um, but UC Uki Niora. Scotty, you had like one more thing you wanted to go yeah. to. I was going off like trying to rationalize things, probably no, going no, way no. too I, deep. I, I just like, I, we can't. Like, free agency isn't open yet. Yeah. So, like, this is who we have to choose from. Like, I, like I, I don't think it's anything deeper than that. It's like, hey, there are there are guys that perform really well in the KHL that we have the ability to sign. And then there's NHL players that we don't have the ability to sign. And we're just in the period of time where we can only sign the people that do really well overseas. And that's just why it happened. Yeah, like, I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm definitely probably think overthinking the move. Um, it's just when I see moves like that, especially off the heels of the Magnus Hellberg. It's weird to have two in, in that yeah. sort of a span. I, I, I agree with that. And um, we never got an explanation on Magnus Hellberg. He just played at the NHL level for one game when we had Thomas yeah. Grice and A-plus Nidelkovich. rating. Yeah, A-plus undefeated, rating. Undefeated in his Red Wings career, baby. So are they just planning on carrying three goalies, and this is just their third guy? Maybe it could also be maybe they saw with the COVID season, as last year was like the, the hopefully the final year of the COVID years, um, that players go down way more frequently because of injury and because of illness, that it, it'll behoove them to have a third goalie on the roster right. instead of having to call people up from Grand Rapids all the time. It could have been as simple as that. Yeah, I, and then, and that's – I think it's a combination of those two things. I, I think it's literally just they we, – we've gotten really thin at goalie at times, and we don't want that to happen again. Uh, and it's that combined with just – it being June and that's yeah. who we have to choose from to sign if we want. And that's somebody that, that costs and Stevie's eye. It quite literally hurts nothing by having him on no. the roster. If no. at the best case scenario, he makes a few spot starts and he's good. So yeah. that's worst case scenario. You lose out on a $750,000 for one year, which you didn't need because you have 335 million. In right. And then space. you sign someone else anyway to be a backup and he's just in the a anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because, you put him on waivers, chances of him getting picked off waivers, having never played an NHL game and being subpar at the AHL level when he was younger. Oh, my gosh. Doubt it's going to happen. Oh, what happened now? Uh, they're already going to a position player, and it is the seventh inning. Shoo. Tigers are down bad. That might be the earliest I've seen us go to a position player in a while. Uh, you want us to talk about a position player here on Lockdown Red Wings? I would love to. What a transition that was. I'm pretty proud of myself for that one. Uh, so last week we talked about David Pasternak. This week we wanted to get to Alex to bring it earlier, and we kind of talked about it with Max. And Max is adamant that there's really no shot that the Red Wings uh, 
you know, acquire a, a Debrinket or a Pasternak just because they're going to cost too much. And you made that argument in the Pasternak episode is that the what you're going to have to give up to get a player like that would almost it'd be like two steps back, one step forward. And I, I tend to agree with that, but it's still fun to talk about. It's still fun to talk about now. It is. He's well, just, nothing's out of the question with Steve either. Yeah. He, he's in a very similar situation as uh, David Pasternak too. Alex to bring it. He's 24 years old, two years longer, younger than Pasternak. He can play left or right wing as an alternate captain for the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blackhawks are staring down the barrel of a full scale rebuild uh, very shortly here. If it's not this year, it's going to be next year. And there's been rumors that they're shopping their star forward because by the time they come out of the rebuild, Alex to bring going to be past his prime. And he's not going to want to play with them anyways. He's going to be a free agent at the end of 2022, 2023. And he's making 6.4 million. Very similar to uh, Pasternak. Just like Pasternak, he's had multiple 40 goal seasons. This past season, he had 41 goals in 82 games, literally a goal every single game or every other game rather with 37 assists for a total of 78 points. Um, that's on a team that had him at a minus 13 rating. So despite the team around him getting mm -hmm. out, like he was putting up points. Um, he also had a 32 goal season the year prior in the shortened season and 41 and 82 in 2018, 2019, he had almost 30 goals in his rookie season of 2017. So he, he is a lethal weapon, just like David Pasternak. But the problem comes in again, just like with the David Pasternak conversation is where does, if you were hypothetically speaking, going to go after a guy like Alex to it because you look at him and you want to be aggressive and you want to make this team, put this team in a position to win sooner rather than later. Cause you feel you're Steve Eiserman. You feel this rebuild has gone on for too long and that you're already screwed by the lottery and you're not going to get that much better. And so this is your core and you got to move forward. And so you got to be aggressive. What is it going to take to bring in an Alex to bring it slot in on line number one and score 40 goals for the Detroit Red Wings? Well, I, that's a great question. I, I, I think that this is one where, first off, no matter what is going on, I, I think you're you're getting rid of some some pretty valuable draft picks. I'm not really sure there's a reality where you're going to be able to avoid that. Um, I, I also think that there's probably not a reality where with with any of these guys again with either of these guys I should say that you are going to be able to offer to to not have in your offer a pretty solid prospect that's going to take some convincing within the fan base to get rid of as well I I think those two things are a starting point no matter what so, and just, just playing devil's advocate, because there's a million reasons for the Red Wings to not do it. And Boltman covered part of it yesterday in our, our prospect profile of uh, Marco Casper is just like, it's going to cost you too much, but playing devil's advocate and talk about why they could and what it's going to take. You look at what Jack Eichel got in a trade. And you, mm -hmm. People are probably going to look at Jack Eichel and go, he was taking second overall and he's a stud. Well, I hate to tell you this, guys. Dabrinkin has outperformed Jack Eichel in his short career. Um, Jack Eichel has had multiple, you know, 30 goal seasons, but he's never eclipsed. Actually, Eichel's only had one 30 goal season, and that was in 2019, 2020, multiple 20 goal seasons. And his, his career high in points is 78, whereas Dabrinkin's career high in points is also 78, but that comes along with 40 goals. And Dabrinkin also had 76. And the last time he hit 40 goals. For sure. So he's he's already had multiple 40 goal season, multiple 70 plus point seasons, which is better than Jack Eichel ever did. Look at what the uh, the Vegas Golden Knights had to give up for Jack Eichel. They that traded. Was, that was a deal. That was a deal. The Sabres got, they got to trade Jack Eichel and a 2023 third round pick to the Vegas Golden Knights for Alex Tuke. Great. Peyton Krebs. Eh. A first round pick in 2022 and a conditional second-round pick for 2023. Now, so is that your base? For, that is the base. That's like your starting point for this, your, do you think? That's your starting point for Dabrinka. And probably, if it's, I mean, just, if, honestly, it's, if it's a market-based deal, then like, yeah, you're not wrong. It's honestly pretty similar to the starting point we had with Pasternak, though, too. It was a player now, a player for the future, a first round pick and an extra pick slotted in what, there. Granted, the Vegas where's the like Buffalo the cutoff for prospects you would you would give up? Like of all the dudes, like is it like everybody anybody but cider on the table? Is it anybody but cider and Raymond on the table? Like where where's the cutoff? 
I feel like it's got to be if if you're not cider's obviously untouchable. Correct. But if you're not willing to part with a Lucas Raymond or with a Simon Edvinson, then you're not actually taking this offer seriously. And that's why it won't make sense. That's that is part of the reason why it doesn't make sense that the Red Wings would ever trade for him because that's what it's going to take. But this is the reality. If you want an Alex to bring it, I mean, besides more excited, you got to be okay with selling off. And granted, to bring it's two years younger than Pasternak. He's 24. So you sign him, he's going to be in his prime longer than uh, Pasternak would be, which is great. And so he could be part, if you decide this is your core now, along with a 26 year old Dylan Larkin and a 26 year old Tyler Bertuzzi, getting rid of Lucas Raymond would be, it would hurt your core in the future, but it would open up a window now. It's the same argument we've had with Pasternak. It's that you you help open a window now, but that window is going to be shorter lived because you gave up a piece for the future. Correct. Lucas Raymond or Simon Correct. Edmondson or William Wallander, but I don't think he's held to the same standard. Or Sebastian Cosa, which, by the way, we have to also briefly mention at the end of this episode, too, because he just won the WHL championship off five shutouts. But Nice. But that's just where it starts. It's got to be a first round pick and it's got to be one of your blue chippers, one of, a guy who's made that debut or hasn't, and then probably another draft pick and another player. That's what you're looking at. That's your baseline. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I agree with you. And, and um, then it just like that. That's the thing we talked about with Max yesterday. Like, is this team where they currently stand in the rebuild? Is that is that even worth it? Well, and that's the thing, too, is I, I mentioned that it could open, like, it, you know, trading for Dupring it now may open a window now. It'll be shortened, though. I That was just me speaking metaphorically. I don't even think that trading for Dupring it now opens a window. Yeah, you get 40 goal score, but you're still really shallow on defense. so much more than just a 40 goal score. <laughs> yeah, you need one defenseman. Like, this is a guy you go out as a finishing piece. Right, I agree. And this I team just doesn't agree. have a finishing piece. So if you're willing to depart with your eighth overall pick, Edvinson Kosa or Raymond, say Zadina, because he's always the guy we just pit, we pitch in there as a player. He's such an roster. easy, like, third throw in guy like, who could be great. Like, he, like, he's like, one just of those like low- change of scenery guy, you know? Yeah. And then maybe like another, a conditional second round pick. Let's just go with what the Jack Eichel trade got. I mean, that is, that is your package for a 24 year old Alex to bring it who has got one more year left on his contract and is look down, looking down the barrel of an extension. He'd be a great player on your team. He'd be great on the Detroit Red Wings. But what you're giving up probably isn't worth it because this team needs so much more than one player. Correct. And, and that's why it's when you're talking about the... Uh, we, we need so much more than one player. And when you're if you're just looking at amount of assets you're getting up and amount of assets you're receiving, right? Like this team has so many holes still and giving up three, four assets for one asset, no matter how good that asset is, is just not going to be worthwhile. Completely agree. It's just, it's just not worth the while. Same with David Pasternak. There's fun. There's sexy things to talk about. Like, like you. The, thank you. Uh, the idea of having a pastor and act jersey or the idea of having a Debrinka, uh player, for sure. a player like Debrinka, it, it, it would put a lot it's of sexy. butts in the seats the first month or so of the season. It's like trading for Blake Griffin. It, you know what? That's that. That's I. I. I think. Well, I mean, Blake Griffin's year, that playoff it's year, not, he, he was he was unbelievable, but yeah, but um, it was, again, it was a team that needed more than just Blake Griffin and Blake Griffin. Correct, the, the, sure. The part no, that makes it really not good, one for one. It's a really is, good. Uh, it's a really good side by side. I mean that that they gave up what a pick Avery Bradley, Tobias Harris, and uh, Tobias Marjanovic. Harris is, and AI yeah, and Bobin and like um, Avery Bradley kind of was like never that great. Um, but Tobias Harris was is like uh, you know whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, like borderline or a just straight up max contract player. Like he was still pretty young at the time. Um, you know, giving up picks when you're a team that is trying to exit a rebuild is always dangerous. Yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good a pretty good side by side. You know, you could even argue that these dudes are better than than Blake, but that doesn't really doesn't really matter because the the point is still the same. Yeah, it's the, the only even the if, only part even if they the only... if these guys drag you into the postseason, 
let's just say they have like 50 goal seasons and you're like, oh my goodness, like they they single-handedly just dragged us into the postseason, right? You're what? You're you're gonna you're gonna go you're gonna get swept by the Milwaukee you're gonna go Bucks five of the in NHL. The first, right. You're gonna you're gonna go home in, in four or five in the first, and then everybody in your core is gonna get a year older, and then you didn't have a pick last year to kind of mix in, and then like and, and you got rid of like your depth pieces. I don't know. Like it it just to me it doesn't seem like uh again Although. given the Dude, no one's saying that these dudes are bad. <laughs> no, I know. I'm not saying. I'm just saying, man. He's not only can he score goals. I just he insinuated plays, he plays. a 50 goal season. I'm obviously, like he's not. Obviously, none of these no, dudes I are don't. bad. I'm just saying, just like it doesn't matter. There. It literally doesn't matter. Like unless you're getting straight up Connor McDavid, like it, it's not going to matter. For those listening, I threw up his player card, and he has he's in the 97th percentile overall, 92 percentile in offense, and 90 percentile for defense as a forward, which is insane his expected goals above replacement is 10 and his uh for offense even strength offense and if expected goals above replacement for even strength defense is two so he's a positive offense offensively positive asset offensively defensively positive asset power play positive asset penalty kill and he takes more penalties he, he draws more penalties than he takes so he he's a really well-rounded player but again it's just not worth it it's not not worth Agreed. where this team's at now I agree. Um, Sebastian Kosa. Yeah. He just won the WHA, WHL Western Hockey League Championship, and he had five shutouts along the way. Um, pretty damn good. Yeah. Pretty damn good is, a, is, a, is an understatement, I would say. Yeah. I'm pulling up his page right now because I didn't have it handy. How old is he now? He is 19. 19, yeah. Golly. So he had a 913 save percentage in the regular season and a 919 save percentage in the postseason with five shutouts and a goals against average of 193. He went 16 and three overall, only lost three games along the way. Um, the only knock against him, and it's not really a knock against him, but just a knock about the WHL and the Edmonton team, the Edmonton Oiler, the league the Edmonton Oiler Kings play in is that, and Prashant Thayer mentioned this on Twitter, is the competition's not that great. Uh, I think Prashanth said that there were only eight times all season where he faced more than 30 shots, which is pretty, his workload is pretty light. Now, not to take away from any of his own achievements. Again, his save percentage was 919, which is pretty good. That's pretty damn good. I, I mean, that regardless of the amount of shots you, you have against you, you still have to make the saves to get that percentage. But it does, it does, you got to keep that in the back of your mind, especially when it comes to developing goalies, that just because he had a great year this year doesn't mean he's NHL ready next year, especially when you look at the competition he faced. For sure. And, and, um, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's really fun on, you know, the biggest stage to see him put up yeah. unbelievable numbers like that. Is, well, is on, always, under the Memorial Cup. Right. Is always going to be fun. So, uh, I'm, I'm really pumped for, to, to watch him develop next year. I'm really pumped for next season. I, I think that, uh, next year could, could be a year where, um, by the end of it, if he's really on his head, uh, maybe he moves to different teams within the organization or, or, or what I'm hoping AHL next year out of him. Really, really. If take he makes step the A by the end of next season, I mean, he like just, Put it on the board like that's uh that that would be a major major win for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have any final thoughts, my man? Uh, we ball. Stay we cool. Ball. Stay cool. Yeah, Jesus. So uh, driving home and I saw triple digits flash and I went, nope, no yeah. thanks. Uh, thanks for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news. And opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your play podcast. Almost said playoffs. Can I not make it through an entire episode without messing something up? Impossible. It's okay, man. You got it. I'm human. It's all right. Uh, like tomorrow, Friday edition. Friday edition. Same time, same place. See your team every day. Every day.